Have you ever balanced a stick straight up and down in gravity and noticed how much you have to adjust the base to keep the center and the top supported? Well, our nervous system, our skeleton, and our soft tissue plays this game all day long. Only difference is we're our own stick. I'm gonna show you an exercise that helps you cultivate a sense of where your center is and where that neutral tipping point is. This exercise I call the chair in your knees. And it's wonderful for cultivating a sense of presence in your base of support, cultivating a sense of center or where neutral in the middle is. It's also wonderful for increasing strength and adaptability of our spinal curves, our lumbar curve, our thoracic curve, and our cervical curve. It also happens to often be relieving for a sacroiliac and low back pain and discomfort. So follow along with me. First step is to look down and to give my feet a shoulder width stance on straight skis. Imagine if I was wearing uh, roller skates or skis, I would go in a straight line ahead of me. So the next step is to unlock my knees. With my knees unlocked, what I'm looking for is to increase a sense of awareness of where that middle tipping point is. Again, what's neutral for my knee? How much do I turn the key to unlock it to be at that tipping point where I could lock it back up or I could go further into motion if I'd like? What's that tipping point for your knees? It might feel awkward if you've never tried it before. With every time you practice this, it'll become easier and easier to find that middle neutral. So, shoulder width stance, unlock knees. The next step, I imagine the back of my skull letting out some slack for my spine and my tailbone. And what I'm gonna do is as I let my tailbone dangle, I imagine my sit bones, the bones that I sit on in a chair, they're actually sitting in the back of my knees. This is the chair in your knees. This is where the name of this exercise comes from. And again, right now I wanna invite you to let all of your weight settle into that chair, settle into your feet. Be in your feet, not on your feet. What also happened when we did that is it straightens out the lumbar curve. That's this one here. As our back dangles, the lumbar curve straightens out a little bit. So again, the pelvis is a bowl. If the back drops, the front comes up. So shoulder width stance, knees unlocked, tail dropped, sit bones sitting in my knees. Go ahead and find this chair anytime you're doing dishes, working at a counter, if you have a sit to stand desk, great time to experiment with this exercise. So if you notice as the back of my pelvis drops, my pubic bone gets to take that slack that I shared from the back of my spine around my pelvis and float up in the front. The next step is I then ask my belly button to float tall out of my pubic bone. The step after that is to ask my breastbone to float tall out of my belly button. Now we're almost back home on this racetrack of making slack for our spine. As I let these anterior structures float tall and enjoy that slack, we also got to straighten out the thoracic curve. That's this one of our ribs gets to straighten out as well. So tail dropped, slack up in the front, belly button tall, breastbone tall. Now, if you think of the top of my breastbone, and there's a muscle that connects the back of my head where I first made the slack from called the sternocleidomastoid. You can see it tighten up there. I then ask the back of my skull to float tall and enjoy that slack out of the back of my breastbone. So let's do one whole lap all the way around here. Shoulder width stance, knees unlocked, sit into the back of your knees, find the chair in your knees. That slack has come up to the front, pubic bone is floated up. Belly button floats tall out of pubic bone. Breastbone floats tall out of belly button. Back of skull floats tall out of the rest of breastbone. And again, this is a racetrack. I've just done a lap of creating length along the curves of my spine. I took the slack from straightening out lumbar curve and shared it with thoracic curve and then shared it with cervical curve. My spine is as straight of a stick as possible right now for my sense of support and my base to feel where I'm balancing it in gravity. And at first, if you haven't asked your spinal curves to learn this adaptability, it's gonna feel really awkward. The first thing you'll bump into are areas of tension and 
areas of restriction that are inhibiting you from adapting your spinal curves. The more you play with this exercise, the easier and easier it will become, the lighter you will be able to hold this central structure. Because that's the goal. What we want to do to move as fluidly as possible in our bodies is to find our center and hold it as lightly as possible. So once you've found this supported structure resting in the chair of your knees and have used it to find some adaptability of your spine, your center, start playing a little bit. Shift side to side and twist. Use this to get a sense of how your legs and your feet hang on to, support, and move the center of your structure. And always ask the question, can I hold it more softly? You can also experiment with a little bit of pigeon toed rotation. Feel how that changes the connections from base of support to torso. You can try a little duck footed. Probably your low back won't like that one as much. This um, is a wonderful exercise for helping create length in the whole posterior chain of the body. Um, we have a lot of exaggerated lower lumbar curve in Western culture due to the elevated heels we wear in our shoes. Because so when we're walking around, if we have to have our heels elevated, they have to go somewhere. And so most of us tighten glutes, quadratus lumborum, hamstrings, calves, to lift this structure up. And so this is a way of setting it back down. Thanks for listening, like Transcend Bodywork on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned.